with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Forceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. nephew of the Lone Ranger returned from a trip to the nearby town of Rock Point and pulled to a stop hurriedly at the camp he shared in the hills with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, oh, Victor, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nothing wrong, Dan? Right, picks a plenty past. When all lather, Dan. I saw the white mask outlaw. He and his men held up the bank in Rock Point. Are you sure it was the white mask outlaw? Yes, sir. Oh, him, killer, we come here to find. I had a close look at him. Tell us what happened. When I arrived in town, I left Victor at the hitch ramp. That's just beside the watering trough outside the bank. Go on. I went across the street to the store. When I came out, I went back to where Victor was waiting. Yes? I was putting the packages into my saddlebag when it happened. <laughs> Easy, Victor. Steady, boy. Steady. There. That doesn't hold all right. No. Man running from the bank. I'll hide beside the watering trough. Oh, golly, they're coming right this way. <laughs> Once we're heading the dirt all around me. I was afraid I'd be shot. Then you might have been killed. Not right. The watering trough protected me. Luckily, they didn't hit Victor. Yes, it is lucky. The leader of the crooks, the man who wears the white mask, almost stepped on my hand as he mounted. Oh. I had a close look at him, too. I even saw the streak where the bullet grazed his right wrist. Did you tell the sheriff about the bullet mark? Yes, sir. When I crawled out from alongside the watering trough, the sheriff ran over to see if I'd been hurt. I told him what I saw, and he and a posse left town to trail the crooks. I see. Otto, go toward town and try to pick up the trail of those crooks. Ah, Dan, you stay here in camp until we return. Well, let's get the horses on. A white mask outlaw known to his men as Mel rode with his followers to the Pecos River. There they separated and rode off in pairs. Meanwhile, Dan Reed waited till after sundown for the Lone Ranger and Tonto to return to camp. Finally, the boy rolled into his blanket and lay down to rest. A full moon had risen, and its bright light made everything plainly discernible for some distance. Dan dozed a while. Then he was suddenly startled by a warning whinny from his horse, Victor. Victor seems to be giving a warning. 
What is it, Victor? When his young master approached, Victor raised his magnificent head, holding it high. Then he stood motionless, gazing expectantly up trail. Dan realized Victor was warning him. The boy listened intently for a moment. Then he faintly heard the beat of approaching hoofs. Dan couldn't see the approaching riders, but he knew they were not the Lone Ranger and Tonto who had gone down trail. Dan acted quickly. Come along, Victor. Meeting Victor, the boy moved to where his blanket was lying. Then, picking it up, he went on with his horse into a narrow gully, the edges of which were lined with thick brush. Oh, Victor, hold on. But the passes by can't see us down here. We'll be able to watch them. Be quiet, fella. Hey, look, Bill. So I rolled into my blanket. I heard your hoof beats coming down the trail and turning in here. I thought I'd better hide. What were you scared of? How'd you know it wasn't those friends of yours coming back? Well, they rode the other way. Of course, now that I've talked to you, I'm sure I have nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. What makes you think so? Well, you didn't try to steal anything from our camp. You were watching plenty close, weren't you, buddy? The moon is very bright tonight, and I, c- I could see plainly. And since you were right there watching from the gully, you must have been able to hear plainly, too, huh? Hey, Mel, if this youngster did hear what we said and told... Just what did you hear, Button? Come on, speak up. I didn't pay much attention, and you really didn't talk much. I asked you what you heard. You going to tell me the truth, or do I have to beat it out of you? Speak up before I lose my temper. You're hurting me. Let go. <laughs> If I were older, you wouldn't do that. Tell us what you heard. Go on. You said you wanted to clean your wounded wrist. What else did you hear? He said to take blankets and supplies, but you told him to forget it. Now, look, Mel, if he heard that much, he heard what was said about nobody knowing you without the white mask. You heard that too, did you, Button? Yes, but it doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, maybe the boy's all right, Bushy. And maybe he isn't, Mel. Look at that horse. I remember seeing it hits right outside the bank today, just before things began to happen. This button is playing dumb, that's all. I thunder I remember seeing that horse in town, too, was he? That means this youngster was there at the time. In that case, he must have saw us leaving. Come on, speak up. You see what happened in town today? Answer me. Yo, Wally. He saw it all right. Then you must have known we were connected with it when Bushy mentioned the white mask, didn't you? No. Why should I? Ah, uh, if you were bigger, we'd plug you. Reckon you figured on spreading the news we stopped here as soon as we were out of sight. The boy's wise to us. There's no doubt of that. We ought to shoot him right now, Mel. Hunter. No use being a hasty, Bushy. We'll take him along with us and decide what to do with him after we reach our hideout camp. 
You know, on your horse, Butner, I might change my mind and put slugs in both you and that horse of yours. Go on, hit leather. Be quick about it. Uh, all right, Steph. I have the bridle, Mip. Let's get to our horses. Remember, youngster, I'm holding this gun on you, so don't try to get away. Now start down the trail. Come on, get it fast. Yes, yes. and a danger to all of us. He must have friends who'll be looking for him. I'll have one of our men go to town and find out if anyone's asking about the boy. Meantime, we'll try to get more information from him. We'll be leaving here in a few days anyway, and then we'll get rid of the button. I don't like having him around, Mel. It's risky. Well, it's either that or do away with him right now. That's for you to decide. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. woman stood a moment staring at Dan Reed. Then she spoke. I don't like having him around, but it goes against the grain to have to kill a youngster. Oh, so here comes one. Oh, this must be the boy Bushy told me about when he brought the horses to the barn. That's right. What's your name, son? My name is Dan Reed. Dan, huh? Tell us what you know about all this. How did you find out about Mel and Bushy? Who else knows? I can't tell you anything, ma'am. They forced me to come here with them, that's all. No use bothering with a button now. Go on, take him out to the barn, tie him up. 
We'll get plenty of information out of him later. Yeah, take him, Juan. And make sure you bind him tightly. He mustn't get away from here. He will not get away. I shall see to that. Good. Get him out of here now. The others will be turning in soon to get some sleep. See, si. I tie him tight and put him on some straw out in the barn. Come along, my friend. <laughs> Followed the trail of the two crooks who had taken Dan with them. While the moon shone brightly, it was slow work. And when they finally reached the point where the hoof marks entered the stream, the two men drew rain. Oh, no, 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 We'll lead the horses back into that thick grove. The trees will give us some protection. Come, Silver. Come, 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 come. Oh, Silver. Oh, it's cutty now. Huh? The shadows hide us from them now. The crooks might have doubled back and waited in ambush in case they were followed. Stay here, Toto. Sniffed a moment, 
Then getting the idea, try to gnaw the rawhide strips. Over and over, he tried to loosen the knots. But the rawhide became wet and the knots tightened. It's no use, Victor. At that moment, Dan had another idea. Go, Victor. Go back to camp. Get the Lone Ranger. Go, Victor. I don't know, but he is gone. Someone must have untied him. A 
Let's go out and look around. Come on, fellow. There. See for yourself, senor. He was here a while ago. I came out with Joe when his horse got away. That's right, and he was tied up tight. That means the dirty little sneak is on foot. We'll get our horses spread out and find him. Whoever sees him first, put a bullet in him. Let's go. All right. Wait. Who said that? Look, up in the hayloft. A man stomped in an Indian, and they have guns. They cover me. Get him down. Get him. Oh, my, my leg. He shot me. Gun him. Use your guns, all of you, and get them both. Better drop your guns and forget what the widow said. In the shed. Yes, the posse with him. Don't keep up. Fight your way out, man. Drop your guns and we'll throw that. Drop them. See, I dropped mine. We'll come down now. Look, Sheriff, he's wearing a mask. He and the Indian must be in with him. I have them both covered. Quick, Sheriff. Those are the friends I told you about. The ones who sent me to bring you. That's right, Sheriff. The tall crook called Mel is the masked killer. The widow works with the gang. Hey, if Mel hadn't been stupid enough to bring that ornery boy here, you'd never have suspected us. Anyway, who does that masked man think he is running around with his face covered? It doesn't matter to you, Widow Danby. Now that the white mask killer and his men are caught, our work in this territory is done. We'll leave them in your custody, Sheriff. Come, Dan, follow. Adios, all. Goodbye. Say, are you going to let that masked hombre just walk out? Go with ahead. A... Tell me who that masked man is, Sheriff. Yeah. You see, Widow Danby, that hombre wearing the black mask is on the side of the law. Might surprise you plenty to know that he's the Lone Ranger. Oh, the Lone Ranger.